What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Friday Night Lights. For those of you who may have missed the message, if you're not in the Discord, we are going to shift this show more to a Sunday night video show. Again, I'm still debating if I should put it out on podcast or not. I guess you guys can let me know if you'd like that. Mostly because a lot of these teams are still playing on Saturdays, and we don't want to miss any of that action, including this week. We had two of the, actually, I think three of the top quarterbacks playing on Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. We don't want to miss that stuff. So we're going to move this show to Sundays. Also because it's, if we're being honest, very hard to find an aggregative place with all the stats. Well, it takes us a lot of time to put all of that stuff together, but let's kick it off here. We're going to run through a little bit of everything. I've got a bunch of different highlights. Again, follow Matt at Big Wide Receiver Guy and David at Solving Football. They're the ones who, especially this week, pulled all that stuff. This was a crazy last weekend for me, so I did not do a lot of uh, – there's a couple videos I pulled. The rest of this comes strictly from those guys. Make sure to give them a follow. They're also just really deep into the recruiting game and know a lot about all of these players. For today's show, we are going to run through a bunch of the stats for the guys, but I am going to run through, as always, the top games, how it played out, and then the games we're looking forward to next week. And so let's start at the top with St. John Bosco, who beat Bishop Amat 42-7. Great game there for them. Didn't really get much, though, on Pierce Clarkson and those guys, uh, but I imagine they played pretty well. They've been kind of killing it. Matter Day wins 43-20 through 20, 43 through 20 against Centennial. They are still the number two ranked high school team in the nation. St. Francis Academy goes into DeSoto, Texas. Very big game here. Uh, DeSoto with John Tay Cook, the Texas commit. They lose 47-7, to as I just mentioned. So really kind of get beat up there. Buford played North Cobb. Now, this was a very intriguing game. This is a game that I did watch. I really only got one highlight from it. It was a crazy weather game. A ton of rain came pouring down in this one. Justice Haynes on the Buford side, running back going to Alabama. Highly rated. And then on North Cobb side, you have Benjamin Hall, a running back that we really like here at C2C, and Malachi Singleton, a quarterback, going to Arkansas very much in the K.J. Jefferson-type mold. They were down 14 to nothing early in this game, all the way up until early into the fourth when North Cobb made a strong comeback. They tied it 14-14. Buford ends up going on and winning it 21-14. So they continue moving up the number six uh, team in the nation in Buford. Uh, it was a great game, though. It was a lot of fun to watch. Bishop Gorman beats St. Louis 56-14. Westlake, the number nine team in the country, produced a ton of really good quarterbacks, 47-17. Chandler, Arizona. And I believe this was their second game of the season. Why does Chandler matter? We're about to talk about a quarterback that goes there in the name of Dylan Rayola, Ohio State quarterback commit, one of the top quarterbacks in the 2024 class. He won 63-7 to against Cathedral Catholic. Very good game there. IMG Academy, the number 13 team in the nation, beat D. Smet Jesuit 52-6. Carnell Tate had a great touchdown catch in that one as well. American Heritage continues to dominate. Still the only 15th ranked team in the nation, which is insane to me. They won 42 to 14 against Lake Gibson. Duncanville, 44 to 21 over Treasure Coast. They're the number 17 team ranked in the nation. And the last one we're probably going to talk about in the top 20 is Denton Geyer. Jackson Arnold continues to play really, really well for them. They win 44 to 14. So, who are some of the quarterbacks that had massive games here? I'm going to read off some of the stat lines, and we're going to play some of the videos as well here. I'm going to start with Kenny Minchie, though. Was 11 of 14 for 292 yards and five touchdowns last night. He is really kind of shooting up my board. He's a tier two quarterback for me in this class. I, I really like him, and he's going to pit. Let's just, let's just pull up the video really quick, because I can actually pause it now as well. So this is actually... Arch Manning. We're going to go back and watch this. I've got two for Arch Manning to kick it off here. Arch Manning, um, he also came out this week. Had a fairly decent week. I'm going to show you both of his plays, and we'll talk about it. Eight for 14, 142 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and 37 rushing yards. Let's check it out. because Some of these do have some noise in them, so I just want to let these two roll, and then we'll talk about the next one. It's a great little rollout right here. Fired into the back of the end zone. Great play by him. And this ex next, next play you're about to watch, he lays it in perfectly from guessing his tight end coming across the middle of the field. But just, that was a great throw. 
So here is Kenny Minchie. So before we jump in and watch his couple of plays that I have pulled here again, 11 for 14, 292 passing yards and five touchdowns, no interceptions for the season right now. He is 39 of 55 for 707 yards with 10 touchdowns and one interception. Guys, he's passing at a 71% completion percentage. That is extremely good. He's com currently committed to Pitt. He's a really intriguing kid in this class. He was at the Elite 11 Finals, a guy we're not talking enough about. Let's watch these two touchdown throws real quick. Off of his neck, too. Like, on the move, great throw here. And then this one I really love. Just the touch right there to get that to his wide receiver. I think just perfect. Great, great play by Kenny Minchie. Again, continuing to rise up my ranks. This kid has been good every single week. I'm really hoping to get one of his games, whether assigned to me or I might just have to kick Matt or David off to be able to watch it because I, I really loved watching uh, what I saw from him. Malachi Nelson is up here next. Um, a rough week for him. He lost again. This is the second week in a row that they've lost. 17-27 to 27 here for 189 yards. Does have three touchdowns. Again, no interceptions or anything. Now, could not find Malachi Lemon stats anywhere, but both of these touchdowns you're about to watch go to Malachi Lemon. What I want you guys to do is watch that pylon right over there, right at the one-yard line. That's where you're going to see Malachi Nelson come up with another incredible catch. I mean, that is just amazing, guys. Like, his hands and body control are incredible. If you guys saw the clip, I believe David posted last week, it was almost the same thing, except he was actually in the air making a catch like that. This time, his feet were mostly on the ground. He's just incredible. One of the top wide receivers in the country. And then here's another one to Malachi Lemon across the middle. Just nice and easy. And it does taunt him a little bit. Ends up getting a flag for that, which, you know, is what it is. I'm sure there was a lot of uh, deep shot. Crap talking going on right there. So as you just heard, Rashada. We are about to watch a Jaden Rashada clip. Oh, I may have gone too far. Let's rewind it. Yeah, we'll just stick it for here for a minute. All right, so let's talk about Jaden Rashada really quick, and then we'll roll the highlights. Jaden Rashada was 18 of 30 for 296 and three touchdowns, zero interceptions. They did not play a very high high school team in the rankings but still really good you'll see two pretty good throws from him here in a second as we rewatch the malachi lemon clip and then we'll get right into rashada rashada deep shot wide open down the side well, obviously line. this one the wide receiver Man, does a lot more of the work but it's still a really good throw we didn't That's get the first part of that throw but last time still really good but this play as well i really Jayden like this rashada it's a nice little with a bullet as just point after try is great throw. it could have been you know maybe a little bit more in stride i guess if you really want to nitpick but i think overall it was just a good throw by him so this next one as you can see him standing right there is dylan rayola we've got a couple 2024 guys we're going to talk about in this video dylan rayola is one of them 253 passing yards four touchdowns he went 15 of 18 here, guys. That's an 83% completion percentage. Just watch this throw. Beautiful. Very easy flick of the wrist right there. There's a bunch more. Um, some of the which, like, I couldn't really pull. But he had some really great throws this past week. If you go just search Dylan Rayola, I'm sure you'll find him. I think there's an article by On3 as well that has a bunch of his. So here is DJ. Oh. I may have just said it wrong. I apologize. Here is Lagway. Lagway is a 2024 commit, as well as another one it is DJ Lagway. I was a little bit worried that I messed that up there. He's 6'2", 225, plays at Willis High School in Willis, Texas. Currently not committed anywhere. He is one of Matt Big Wide Receiver Guy's favorite quarterbacks in this class. He is, for me right now, Trayola. I have not graded a ton of these guys yet, but let's just watch what he does. Wildcats can regroup here on the first down. Three receivers to the right, two to the left, put a man in motion, and they fake the end around, and he is hitting the backfield. Somehow gets away from three blue jerseys, but he just gets to the right, two to the left, empty backfield for Langway. Two 
Snap back, and it's a quarterback draw all the way. He's got all kinds of room. Look out, 40 to midfield, down to the 40. To and the he's 30, gone. To the 20, 15, 10. He definitely five, had a tough game touchdown. based on everything Matt was saying in this one, but he's got incredible legs, and that's something that we wanted to show you guys. He did apparently come up with a little bit of an injury, and I was not able to get any of his stats, but still overall good game for him, as you can see the rushing oh, threat as Here's well. Laundry for Lagway. Next up. This is Jaden Davis, another 2024 kid. So the goal of this show was to keep you guys as, you know, ready for the future as possible. Jaden Davis, he was a guy that the, the Buckeyes were in on for a long time, early on in the process before they pivoted to Dylan Rayola. Six foot 190. He is a four star. He's QB2 currently in 24 7 Sports 2024 class. Again, not necessarily committed to anyway. I actually think Lagway technically committed over the weekend or was visiting Clemson. There was some stuff going on with him and Clemson. I don't know. They actually officially committed, but anyways, here's Jaden Davis. Just watch this. It's a beautiful throw down the field. You can see why Ryan day wants him. I mean, he does have all kinds of time. I don't know why the defender didn't attack him. It just lays that in there perfectly for the wide receiver. So Jaden Davis, a very intriguing player. Edgewater. Just look at some of the running backs. Now that's it for the quarterbacks. Um, quarterbacks highlight wise. Before we move on from the quarterbacks, I'm going to talk really quick about the rest of the guys. So as I mentioned on Arch, I already mentioned Minchie. Jackson Arnold went 26-36 to 36 for 356 yards, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. He also had four carries for 29 yards and a touchdown. He is the one committed to Oklahoma. Dylan Lonergan. Dylan Lonergan went 9 of 22 for 130 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception, he also added one rushing touchdown as well. For those of you who do, do not know, Dylan Lonergan is committed to Alabama as well. Austin Novus had 12 of 24 for 174 yards and one touchdown, one interception. He added six rushing yards. He is committed to Baylor. Christopher Vizina, the Clemson commit, eight, 13 of 28, 221 passing yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, 17 rushes for 97 yards and two touchdowns. Eli Holstein, also an Alabama commit, was very good in this game. 13-22, 231 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, six carries for 34 yards, and one rushing touchdown. Last but not least, two more before we get on to the running backs here. Avery Johnson, uh, someone that Alfred is very high on, a really fun kid to watch. He had he went 7 for 10, just played the first half in this game, 7 for 10 for 175 yards and two touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, we could not find the rushing stats, but we know for sure that he had at least 75 yards, 75 yards rushing and a touchdown. And then J.J. Cole, also Elite 11 kid, committed to Iowa State, 17 to 26, 212 touchdowns. 212 passing yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions, nine carries for 14 yards. Let's jump to the running backs. Here's Cedric Baxter, our number one running back in the 2023 class. CJ Baxter and Chase Carter to run the offense. Look for Carter. Be a little more clean here in the second half, and they give it off to Baxter, who's looking for a block up front as he turns the corner and gets loose past the 50, and that's why he's going all the way to the end zone and all the way to Texas. For a, a nice play there by Baxter. Baxter, obviously, you know, really good vision, in my opinion, good patience to wait for that hole to break open, and then he takes it to the house. Here is Justice Haynes. As you can see, the Buford is up 7-0, still the first quarter against Northern Cobb. One of the games I talked about, a top, one of the top games in the nation this past weekend. Justice Haynes is one of my top-rated running backs. I really like this kid in this class. You can see here, just gets through the hole, and he's gone. It was a great play for him. Goes in. I believe he scored another touchdown as well. I do not have his stats. We could not find anything on him. But I do know that he, I, I know for a fact that he scored the touchdown to put them up 21 to 14 as well as it was pouring rain. And he kind of did like the silencer to like end it. Like this is it. There's 40 something seconds left on the clock. So great day for Justice Haynes, the running back. So we're going to move on to the wide receivers now. Don't have a ton of stats on them either. For some reason, it is really hard to find. Stats on these guys. The only two that we were able to get confirmed on running backs. So Baxter, the first play that you guys watched, he went twenty had 26 carries for 274 yards and two touchdowns. I'm going to tell you what. I watched that Edgewater game. 
it was very surprising to me that he did that well. He seemed like he was getting bottled up a lot in that game. He did get dinged up in like the first quarter as well, but ended up having a really great day, as you just saw. And then Roderick Robinson, he is not high in any of the recruiting services, but us at C2C have him as a top, I believe, no lower than eight running back. 20 carries for 307 yards and three touchdowns. He's a UCLA commit, but he is getting more and more offers. We're intrigued to see if he ends up staying at UCLA. He's a guy that we really like. But let's check out Brandon Ennis now, American Heritage wide receiver, going to the Ohio State, one of the top-rated wide receivers in this class. Let's go, Folks, Brandon Ennis is good. He's made it on all three episodes so far of our show. He might end up becoming one of my favorite wide receiver recruits in this class. You know, week one, I had the highlight uh, that blew up with him making just an amazing mossing a defensive back. Last week, really good smooth route running, makes the over-shoulder catch this time. He gets a, a kick return to the house. Here's Jaden Greathouse. Now, we do have some of the stats for, for a, a great house. He is the wide receiver going to Notre Dame. Notre Dame commit five catches for 153 yards and two touchdowns. He also returned a 61-yard punt return touchdown. Here's just one of his touchdown catches. His fingertips somehow able to hold on to that. What a graph. Incredible for the Notre Dame commit. And... Uh, he won't have the heat and humidity to worry about in South Bend, but as you can see, there really nice catch with the, with his hands. Had to actually go across his body to grab that. We're gonna try pulling it off screen first, and then going back and forth to it. Is I'm not sure if you can do that. Well, I don't know why I did that because we're gonna check out here. So J this is Jerry on Dickey right here. You're looking right in the middle of the field. You can see that wide receiver split between the cornerback and the safety. That's where Dickey is currently running, and he gets a catch for a nice touchdown. It's a great throw, in my opinion, from his quarterback. Splits the two safeties, catches the ball in for a touchdown. Jerry on Dickey, we did not get confirmed stats for him, but apparently, again, having another really great day. Carnell Tate up here. Watch here on the bottom of the screen where you can see the Atletico tent. He's about to go up and snag a touchdown. It was a great play there by Carnell Tate. Again, no confirmed stats on him either, but it was a really good day for him. So next up is going to be Micah Hudson. We're going a little bit deeper with these next two guys. He is a 2024 commit. I'm sorry, actually the next guy's 2023. We'll talk about him as well. But Micah Hudson, so he had at least, we could not get confirmed, but we know for sure he had four catches for 109 yards and three touchdowns. Let's check out some of the plays. And there's no sound on this for anybody wondering why you can't hear anything. I forgot about that. But nice little cut right there across the middle. Slant route just takes it into the house fairly easy. And then here is his other one. Just goes down the field. I mean, nice and easy, right? Like he's very, he's a very good wide receiver. One of Matt big wide receiver guys' favorites. Again, he is a 2024 commit so just to tell you guys a little bit about him if you guys do not know anything six foot 186 he is a currently a four star in the composite or i'm sorry four star on 24 7 sports five star on the composite he's their wide receiver four in the composite wide receiver i'm sorry wide receiver four on 24 7 sports wide receiver two in the composite next up is kyle parker kyle parker not very highly rated in any of the services, he is an LSU commit 5'10", 175, plays for Lovejoy High School. You can see that logo right there in the middle of the field, LL. In Lucas, Texas, he's a three-star on 24-7 sports and a three-star in the composite. Wide receiver 55 for 24-7 sports, wide receiver 58. He's top tier three for us, which puts him roughly in like the 15 range, if I'm remembering correctly. Let's just watch these plays. And why is it this? These are his stats. Not over the season. One game, people, 23 receptions for 341 yards and three touchdowns. Let's check out these clips really quick. I mean, obviously that one fairly easy, wide open, but still nice catch, nice touchdown. This time he goes 
gets it in the middle of the field. Great catch going down. And then his last couple, I believe Matt does put the circle on him so you can just watch him go. I mean, look at that. I mean, he's catching it in traffic. You know, knowing that he might just get absolutely blasted there, it just blows by the defender. I mean, that was he just made that look easy. There's two, two of his three touchdowns, 341 yards. And then last but not least, just again, nice catch, screen pass, defender gets level. I didn't even realize the defender got leveled that bad. That's just whoo. I don't remember if he even takes this one out. So he does that. He does. So there you go. Three touchdowns. You got to see all three of his touchdowns for his 31, 341 yards on 23 catches. Just an absolutely insane day for him. He's definitely going to be moving up our ranks a little bit. Won't be 55 for us. I can promise you that. All right. So let's jump in and talk about some of the games that are coming up this weekend. Kenny Minchie. It's a game where I'm actually getting a chance to watch. Pope John Paul II, where he plays, is playing Independence at 8 o'clock on actually Thursday, which is very intriguing. Joe Bay High School, which has got DJ Oliver, is playing Port St. Joe uh, on Saturday, on Friday, I'm sorry. Some of the other games that I'm personally looking forward to, you got Longview versus Tyler Legacy. Jalen Hale, one of the wide receivers that we really like, he is playing on Friday as well. You have got DeSoto, Texas versus Oak Cliff on Saturday. John Tay Cook playing at 7 o'clock at night. So those are the main games. A couple of players being off. We're getting into that point where some not everybody is playing. Really excited to continue doing this with you guys. That's 21 minutes. I've not realized it was going to take that long. So but we'll be back again next week. And make sure to check out the Campus to Canton Twitter feed as we're going to start releasing our own high school players of the week as well. And... Well, one of the guys that was in this video is going to win it. I bet you guys can guess who, but definitely check that out. Probably be dropped on College Football Mornings and will definitely be released on the Twitter feed as well. Until next Sunday, guys, enjoy your weekend, the rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you guys again.